How's it going, everyone? Moodog from Moodog's Frugal RCs and more in the research kitchen. Uh, we are in the research kitchen today with the uh, WL Toys A979. Uh, this is a vehicle that I just did the rig rundown on, and I wanted to uh, do this quick video to show you guys and answer a question that I posed on the video. Are these shocks oil fillable? Uh, happily, to, happily uh, uh, I can say yes, they are. Um, I've already done three of them. I'm going to show you how to do number four. Um, if you guys are looking to get a performance upgrade and the way this thing rides, drives, tracks out of the box, all you're going to have to do is hit supply your own oil. Uh, today we're going to be using the Team Losi 40 weight synthetic. Uh, 40 weight I find to be a good weight oil to start, a good starting point, not too thin, not too thick, and it kind of it kind of gives you a gauge of where you need to go if you need to go thicker or uh, thinner in some cases. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get this uh, shock absorber off right here, and I'll show you guys how to fill that up. Now you're going to need a hex wrench for this because that is a hex uh, screw on here, and I'll go ahead and uh, zoom in just a little bit there to show you guys what I'm talking about. Uh, we're going to have to loosen uh, this up right here and remove it. And then on the bottom here, we have a little uh, cup that's pressed onto the ball. We're going to have to just take a small screwdriver and pop that out of place and remove the shock absorber. So I'll go ahead and loosen this up and uh, remove this shock absorber uh, from the actual car itself. And we'll go from there. Stay tuned. Okay, that one's almost out there. And I'm using, uh, for this operation, I am using a uh, 1.5 uh, millimeter um, hex kind of driver here. And on the bottom here, guys, like I mentioned before, uh, there's just a little kind of a, a cup and it's pressed over a kind of a screwed in ball end. So I'll go ahead and pop that out of place for you guys. And we'll be right back. All right, guys, with that out of, out of the way, you can go ahead and get the car set to the back here. And I'll show you a little bit more about the shock absorber. Pretty basic design when it comes to these things, guys. You have a plastic body on here. We have a couple of uh, spacers. This is actually to set the ride height or, or uh, to uh, stiffen up the rear spring a little bit. There is no... Uh, threads on here and no knurled knob that you can turn down to set your preload so they are using these little spacers i'm not going to use them because i'm putting oil in here so i'm going to see how how it uh how it acts without these on so i'm just taking a small uh needle nose pliers and getting these out of the way setting them aside over here and get those out of the way for the time being uh, next thing we're going to do is uh, remove this bottom saddle on here uh, so we can get the spring out of the way and then get this cap off of here so what i do is i'll just hold it in one hand uh, hold onto the saddle pull the spring down and you can see on the saddle guys there's going to be a little split in it right here what we're going to want to do is just kind of rock it forward and uh, remove it from the shock shaft and set that off to the side here. And we can take our spring out of the way, set that off to the side as well. Now we can go ahead and remove this cap. Um, I'll go ahead and do that. And it wasn't on there very tight. We're going to want to make sure that we have our diaphragm um, intact. Now it's not inside the cap. It usually sits inside there. But we can see that it's stuck on the shock body here. And we want to take a look at that. Just kind of look look it over real quick to make sure it's not cut or uh, has any. It doesn't have any holes in it. That type of thing. Because that's what's actually going to seal the oil from uh, coming out of the shock uh, and spilling all over the place when it uh, when it uh, goes in the downstroke. So we can go ahead and push up on the shock shaft and you will see uh, in the top here there should be just a little bit of oil and yeah, there's just a tiny bit of oil in there i think they put it in there just for uh, lubricity not no other reason um, it really isn't doing anything at all uh, we'll go ahead and just kind of wipe that surface off real quick here with our paper towel and get that old oil kind of out of the way uh, next thing we're going to do is go ahead and extend the shock shaft all the way and take our oil um, and we're going to go ahead and add our oil now it's going to be the same way uh, for most shock absorbers that you're going to be filling you're going to want to fill it about three quarters of the way full unless you have a bleeder valve on top then if you overfill it you open up the bleeder and squeeze out the excess in this case we don't have a bleeder so we're going to have to go ahead and watch our, our oil level on here and I'm going to go ahead and fill us about three quarters of the way up and stopping every every couple squeezes here to see where we're at and it looks like we could use a little bit more in there yet and that looks like a pretty healthy amount right there that looks like we're right where we want to be I'm going to put the cap back on that and I'm going to go ahead and 
pop the diaphragm inside the cap here. Uh, now you want to make sure that you're getting in, the, getting this in there pretty straight, guys. You don't want that skewed because what can happen is when you start tightening this thing down, uh, you could actually get it uh, snagged up in the threads and cut it and cause all kinds of problems. So we'll go ahead and just screw this back on here uh, real quick and get this back in place. And there we go. Now we can go ahead and just go ahead and press the press the um, press the shock shaft in and let it go. And we can see that it extends on its own a little bit. That's telling us that we have enough oil um, inside. And then just basically reinst reinstalling the uh, spring and the bottom saddle, pretty much reverse of what we started. So we'll get our spring, set that in place there, uh, pull that forward a little bit to give us a little working room here to get our saddle back in place, and we'll grab the saddle. And you want to make sure you're putting the uh, wide end of the saddle up towards the spring, and the narrow end is going to fit over the bottom eyelet part here. So we got that in place, and that is riding where it should be. We can go ahead and squeeze that and tell a big difference, guys. Big difference. Now we have a more smooth rebound on there, and that's going to make a world of difference with the way this thing tracks, with the way it drives, um, all that good stuff. So I just wanted to impart this little knowledge to you guys and show you how to do this real quick. Nothing too difficult to do. The only thing you're going to need is your oil um, and a little bit of patience and a 1.5 millimeter um, driver of some kind. You can use a uh, little kit kind of Allen wrenches, but it is metric or you can purchase this type that I have here uh, for relatively inexpensive on Amazon or any other site. Um, I'll go ahead and I'll post a link to this uh, description, uh, a link in the description uh, for this type of driver um, as well as the oil. Um, that's pretty much it for the video. If you guys like it, give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you don't like it, give it a thumbs down. I appreciate all my new subscribers. Thanks for watching, guys. See you all in the next one, and God bless the Republic.